Hello, Cancer. Welcome to your February 1st through 15th love reading. I am Princess India. If you are new, welcome. Welcome. All of my old subbies, you know what's up. You know I love your freaking face. So just a little bit of uh, preliminary stuff before we get her going. Personal readings with me, the waiting list is still available on the site, integrating my POS system into the site. As soon as that's done, everyone that's on the waiting list is going to be notified via email to go ahead and book um, your reading and the date that you want to get your reading and what else. Um, and the pre-registration for the Reiki course is on the site as well. Everything else you need to know is in the description box below this video. And as you know, it's gigolo time, you know, because I got you guys a Valentine's Day card. So I'm going to read it to you. Don't get too, you know, in your feels. Just kidding. You're a cancer. Just kidding. I'm truly fortunate to have you in my life, cancer. And I don't need a cookie to tell me that. But I'll take one anyway. You know I love a cookie. Love always, your favorite Torian, Princess India. I love you too. So Cancer, we are going to look at you as well as your cross watcher for the 1st of February until the 15th of February. That includes Love Day or for the rest of us, Singles Awareness Day. So first we're going to look at an overall energy for you as well as your cross watcher from the Whispers of Love deck. Because you have to whisper when we say it. And then we're going to use the Tarot of Sexual Magic to look at the energies going on with you guys. So we're going to ask Spirit to give us clear and direct guidance for my wonderful, wonderful Cancerians. Clear and direct guidance, please, Spirit. Anything they need to know, anything of utmost importance, anything to assist them on their path journey. I ask that that comes to the forefront in this here reading. Anything that they're conflicted about, anything that they need answers on, I ask that you give me the ability to offer clear and direct guidance to my Cancerians, as well as clear and concise messages. Not thinking in advance, Spirit, because I know you're good for it, Zagnet, the son of a gun, I said. So the first card is going to be for Cancer. The second is going to be for your cross watcher, because they're cross watching things. First is for Cancer. I feel like Granny Dew came out a little bit there. <laughs> Only a few people are going to get that. All right. Physical touch is important. For some of us, nothing is more important than a tender touch. This might include a pat on the back or giving a hug to someone who needs it. That's super important. And it makes me think of, um, I don't know, you may be familiar the books of five love languages the second card is for the cross watcher please spirit um physical touch is one of the uh the love languages right and um some people need that right so it's kind of like if a person say if a person was like acts of service right and and your love language is in essence is how we interpret or communicate love right so if you have a person who's a physical touch person, right, or for this coming for cancer, like if your partner, the person that you're with um, is a physical touch person, right, and your love language is acts of service, right? So you could take their car to get the tires rotated, the oil change, get it detailed, you know, and, you know, they had a little tear in their seat. You get that fixed and stuff. And then you bring them the car and they're going to be thankful. They're going to have gratitude. They're going to be grateful. But they would still feel as if something is missing in the relationship, even if you always did things like that. Because they would look at it like, oh, you know, that was really sweet of them to do that. But if they're not an acts of service kind of person and they're a physical touch person, what they're really desiring, they really wouldn't want you to do stuff for the car. They wouldn't care one way or the other. It's like if you just held my hand, you know, kiss me on the cheek, gave me a hug, you know, put your arm around me or something. In that case, that's how they would know that they were loved and you wouldn't even have to do all of that. But if they're not a... um an acts of service person, they may be showing love to you by physically touching you and you may not be about that life. Like you might just be like, why are they always all up under me, all over me and things of the sort. But that's how that person's communicating love. 
And then another thing that's important, psychologically speaking, it's a connection thing. So, I mean, even like dating gurus will tell you that. Like if, uh, if a woman is on the first date with a guy, so here's a little intel, ladies. If you're on a first date with a guy and you want to connect with him, then when you ask him a question, you make eye contact and then just touch his wrist and look him in his eyes. And it's like that, I don't want to say mimics, but it more or less creates a connection to where it's like, oh, sure, I'll, I'll tell you how I filed those TPS reports, you know? So that's how you, you know, create or start to cultivate a connection with someone. So physical touch is extremely important because it makes us feel human again, especially in this day and age. It's like we barely see people in person, you know? We're always talking to people through the screen, and I could say that myself. Well, I want my son to do something. I'm not going to go to his room and FaceTime him and be like, hey, took the trash out? Oh, okay. Love your face. <laughs> and he's like, I love your face too, mom. <laughs> but yeah, man, but we've gotten so comfortable with the way that we have to reach out to people, which is a perk, especially if we have like, you know, family, friends and stuff that are far away from us. It's wonderful, but you don't want that to become, um, well, I'm not even going to say become because it's already become that, but it's just the fact that you don't want to create, um, an intimacy wedge between you and your partner with that. So take that into account, Cancer. So we're going to get three cards for you and three cards for your cross watcher. That's it. That's it, take that, the son of a gun. All right. Speaking of my son. I hear him like stomping up the stairs. All right, my cancers. First card for cancer. Nine of wands. Then we have the King of Wands. I mean, King of, wait, no, that is a King of Wands. Oh, okay. You guys may be dealing with a Leo person. Interesting. And then we have the Magician. Hmm. Could be an Aries. The Magician. Right here, this is. Yes, it is. I feel a disconnect. I feel a disconnect. I feel a disconnect like a um like a separation between two people. But it's interesting because you're dis like you're separated you're you're disconnected but it's almost as if you're holding yourself back from reaching out to this person which is weird don't quite understand why people okay well i mean if the person is toxic then please continue to utilize your willpower and hold you know yourself back from this person especially if that physical touch is not the good kind of physical touch if you know what i'm saying but we're not getting into all of that today but i don't know man this feels and it it's making my heart hurt not in like a like a physical type of sense but it's almost like a broken heart so I don't know if it's a separation because maybe somebody moved away, but I don't know. This is like, there's very, um, it's like a hollowness that I sense. And I mean, like I'm saying that can go both ways. Because you could be desiring a person for the wrong reasons. You know what I mean? It could be someone that you separated from that you knew you needed to because they were toxic, right? But I don't know. I'm feeling this like 
separating from a person, but it's not necessarily them being toxic. It's almost like being broken up in... Uh, or something blocking it or something, but desperately wanting to give yourself to that person, but holding yourself back from that, right? And I feel like I've said this before because... I don't know. It's almost like taking advantage of a person and feeling almost like, I don't know, like the damage, uh, have, have having done too much damage. And that's why it's holding the person back. Cause it's, it's knowing that they wouldn't accept that. Like they wouldn't, or you are you assuming that they wouldn't accept you back What's at the bottom of this deck. The fourth chalices. Are you kidding me? So it's like, I'm just going to sit here and not do anything. I'm going to think about how much I miss this person and how much I wish they were here and they were in my life. And think about all of the stuff that I did back then that really messed stuff up or how we broke up. But I'm not going to do anything in the present about it. That's kind of like what it's like. But it's a, a, a deep desire to want to come close to this person, reunite with this person. But it's... um. I'm going to go ahead and clarify this. It's almost like being afraid of either having done too much damage or too much da damage having been done in the relationship prior to the breakup. You know what I'm saying? But then it could also be just if it's not with a person in particular, it could just be desiring to be in a relationship with anyone, but you know, like being single and wanting to connect with someone and kind of trying to hold yourself back from that because of having been hurt in the past. But it's a very deep desire for it. But the whole thing is, this is all about desire. And I think it's like, and this has been the theme for the last couple of readings. It's almost like people having been hurt in the past. And, um, ha ha, the fool card. Clarifying the king of wands. Um, it's a, who was that with? Was that? Well, it was with Aquarius with needing to leave a situation because they were in a situation where there was not really any love there and they were too afraid to go out in search of what they really wanted. And with Sag, it was kind of being used to being single for so long that they just weren't dating at all. And their cross watcher was like a fear from past experience. And I'm getting the same vibe from you guys. It's like... Whether it's a particular person that cancer has in mind or if it's just the desire to be in a relationship, period, it's like the only thing that's holding you back from manifesting that in your life is fears from the past, right? But looking at this as the nine of wands, the next thing would be the 10, which means that you need to release the burden. But I feel like you guys are more or less... Uh, fearing that the relationship or being in a relationship period or being with that particular person would be uh, a, like a burden. You know what I'm saying? And not in the sense that being in a relationship is a burden, but it's more or less like a fear of being hurt again. Because I kind of get the vibe of like you guys being with someone who where you carried the entire relationship yourself. You know what I'm saying? Like it was a relationship of one with two people in it, right? And I'm feeling like what Spirit is saying here is physical touch is important because, and I mentioned this with Pisces months ago too, and with Sagittarius, it's like we can do personal work on ourselves or we could even take a step back out of life to get ourselves together. But it's like we have to return to the land of the living because by nature, humans are communal people. It's like coworkers and friends and, you know, family you know if you don't have a toxic family it's like having physical touch in the sense of like connecting with other human beings is so vital for us like just physiologically you know it's like it's it's no it's not really life to spend it alone and it doesn't have to be romantic like that's why I say it could literally be friendships but I kind of get the sense that you guys have been hurt or disappointed somehow and it could be by a group of people. It could be by a friend. It could be by a romantic partner. But it's like, I feel like isolating yourself from other people 
the goal is to protect yourself, but you're missing out on life. Like you're not really living. You know what I'm saying? You're not having experiences or, you know, there's no one to talk to. Like if you wanted to, if you were going through something or just wanted to run an idea by someone, it's like there's no one to talk to. It's like it's just you. You know what I mean? But with the fool card here, it's more or less, it's like it's telling you to surrender to your desire. Like you have the ability to manifest what you want. But it's like the only thing that's preventing you for what, from what you want is fear because you want this. You want a partnership. You know what I'm saying? You want a partner or you want friends. You know what I'm saying? Or whatever it is that you want. But I really feel like it's very connected to you and other people. So it's like a, a connection thing, whether it's a tribe or a romantic partner. But the only thing that's stopping you from that is fear because you have the support from spirit that's kind of like clearing the pathway for a new beginning. Because it's literally, I'm seeing this as like the fool is coming up and it's like, here's my desire, here's my fear. But the fool is like, bump all of that and go straight to the magician. It's like manifest it. If you want it, make a choice. And like how I've been talking about a lot this month about this differentiation between the two base emotions, which are love and fear. It's like fear Making a decision out of fear is the choice to isolate myself. You know what I'm saying? So it's the fear of what could possibly happen that's making me stagnant and is preventing me from experiencing life. But surrendering to love or choosing love or from a place of love is having trust in spirit, in yourself, knowing that the experiences that you've had up to this point have equipped you you have the tools to be able to manifest your desires. And because of what it is that you've been through, you have wisdom and knowledge and experience that you didn't have prior to this upset and heartbreak. So you know what the red flags look like. You know what the risks are going in. So if ever you find yourself in a situation where a person is behaving like that person that you dealt with in the past, you now are equipped to recognize it. And you have your free will choice yet again to choose to walk away. You know what I mean? But it's like no one's going to find you pent up in your house anywhere. You know, you're safe, but you're not really living. You know what I mean? So manifest destiny, dang that son of a gun, I said. Cancer, let me spank your butt. You cross watcher. Love who you are. You are a divine and wonderful person deserving all of the wonderful things that life has to offer. Yes, you are, Cross Watcher, Dagnatted Son of a Gun. Your first card, oh goodness, it's the Knight of Wands. Your next card is the King, oh, I almost dropped it, the King of Swords. And then we have the Queen of Pentacles. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. This is interesting. Okay, so here's the deal. And I'm hearing this like two different ways, dog. In one regard, the cross watcher, and I'm not going to say this is cancer because, you know, it's the king of swords and why not. But I'm more or less... I'm hearing this a couple of ways, y'all. It's almost like it's three different people. Like it's one person where cancer could be a person that's like a friend of yours. Or it could be somebody that you're lightly dating or talking to or something of the sort, you know. And I more or less feel them trying to be an influence or, or something in your situation. 
because it's like the situation, the person, it's almost like, okay, how I would see this, and this is interesting, like this is your BFF and you're dealing with a guy that's like married or something, right? And it's more or less me seeing this as a message from your cancer friend to you of like them telling you a lot of times about this person and telling you that you deserve better, right? And you don't necessarily have to settle for that, right? Because you could be with someone who wants to be with you wholeheartedly. You know what I'm saying? Because this situation with this King of Swords person, it's very indulgent. It's only centralized around sex. That's the only time the person ever comes around. That's the only thing that they really want. Like talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Because the person is in a commitment, whether it's a marriage or just a relationship, and they have not left and don't really have intentions on leaving because they're more just concerned with having their uh, their desires fulfilled, right? And I think a part of you knows that. This is so interesting. This is coming out on the Crosswatcher side. A part of you knows that, and I feel like this cancer person has been telling you that, but it's not wanting to accept that or not wanting to believe that it's that because it's almost like, I want to believe that like the person is going to leave their wife, right? Or husband, right? Um, like you want to believe that that's going to happen because of the promises the person has made. But it's like, I, I don't know. This is almost like a, an intervention on some stuff. But it's almost like I'm seeing the same thing that it is that your friend has been telling you constantly. Or it could be a family member, whatever. Is that like home dude is not even here like talking about it. You know what I'm saying? Like completely emotionally unavailable. But the whole thing is, is that all it's a, all, all it's this connection is all that it's interrelated to is this person's needs getting met and your needs aren't getting met at all. It's just consistently being swept up in someone else's decision making and what they're doing and so on and so forth, right? Now, for others of you cross watcher, I would say that this could potentially be, I don't believe it's this cancer up here, but if you're, because uh, I feel like with this this cancer up here, this is a person who, um, this is someone who's been through some things and is trying to work themselves out as far as moving forward. And they're really being held back by fear. But if you're dealing with a cancer person and you're watching this video, hoping to get clarity on the cancer person, I feel like the cancer person that you're watching for that probably would not be watching, you know, spiritual videos on YouTube. I feel like this is giving you a, a, an insight into this person, right? So it's more or less, like I said, it's with them. It's a person who's already in a commitment and this being like a third party situation or it's someone where more often than not, you're finding that the only thing that you guys are ever doing is sleeping together, you know? But it's more or less, you never have the whole person. Like they're never, like they're not making any investments. They're making a lot of promises, but it's like their mouth is writing checks that they ask can't cash because they've been promising a lot. But have they ever come through on something? Nah, like they've been saying they was going to leave their wife for the last five, 10 years or something. You know what I'm saying? But the only thing that they ever seem to make time for is sex pretty much you know what i'm saying and the whole message is here is to love who you are is knowing that you deserve way more than this you don't have to settle for this like this isn't all there is and especially like and then this person maybe they may have some little addiction problems going on you know what i'm saying like a little drinky drinky you know a little too much they're a little lushy you know what i'm saying they're a little too much in the spirit, if you know what I'm saying. 
But the thing that would be the determining factor with this is if you could look back on the what you guys do more than anything else, and it's like you may sleep together, like you may go, you know, to I don't know, I hop from time to time. But it's like it it's it, it over a course. I can't get my words out. Over the course of time, it hasn't progressed to anything more than that, but there's been a lot of promise of it. And I really feel like the action is here. The lesson in all of this for the cross watcher person is to learn your self worth and value. You know what I'm saying? To to know that you don't have to settle for you know lustfully filled passion and things of the sort, or that you aren't required to wait on people. You know what I'm saying? If this isn't in alignment with you and this isn't what you want then you have the right to say that I deserve better than this. And if you're not giving me what it is I'm desiring, you have the right to walk away. You know what I'm saying? And do what's best for you. You know, it's not a requirement. And I've, I've said that before. It's not a requirement to have to wait on people, you know, and that's not being selfish. It's just being realistic. And especially with someone like this, it's like they have a lot of like, shiznit that's going on with them and uh, and I think a lot of times and something I find that helps a lot of people that I work with is when we're talking about a person that you're waiting on it's like let's be realistic here okay if a person that you want to be with is married okay now in a counseling setting Whenever a person is married, we say like for every two years that the person was married is a year that they need to spend single, especially if you've been married for like 20 something years. There's time where you have to get to know yourself as an individual again. And that's not even talking about if this was an abusive type of situation. Right. So that's one thing. So if the person just gets divorced, so they just leave somebody, break up, whatever. They need time to heal to get back to their baseline. So that's going to take some time, right? Now, if the person has an addiction, so if they have true alcoholism, they got to go to rehab. You know what I'm saying? They got to get on a recovery program. That's more time. So we're talking about like years here. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> literally, we might be looking at about five years just right now. So that's like, say, if the person was like, married I don't know eight nine ten years you know what I'm saying they go to rehab you know so we're looking at like a little five six year span so far you know what I'm saying and then if they're not spiritually aware that's a path within itself that has absolutely no time frame on it whatsoever <laughs> you know what I'm saying so we're tagging on a few more years so are you willing to wait like another decade, another five years. Like if we go on the easy side, are you willing to wait five years to 10 years for this person to get it together? And that's only if it's linear, which development and healing never ever is. So if best case scenario, they end up being one of the people that I've never met in my life or career that decide to go on a healing path and they just do it right the first time, get straight through it. You know what I'm saying? Are you willing to wait those five, 10 years? And just put your whole life on pause, waiting for them to get it together. Or your other option would be, you know, they get out of that relationship and get out of that marriage and you just jump into a relationship with them. And then they don't heal. You know what I'm saying? That would be great. I'm totally being sarcastic right there. But yeah, you really got to think about stuff like that. And when you start to bring it to like more of a grounded, practical perspective, you start to see what you're really looking at. And what you're really waiting for. You know what I'm saying? Like, if if somebody's married, don't ever get bucked up when they get divorced. Because they got, that's going to be some years, okay? I'm saying that from a divorcee. The last thing on a person who just got divorced's mind is, I want to get back into another committed relationship right now today. You know? After I got out of this marriage. You know? That doesn't happen. I mean, it does happen. Probably not the best thing, but. Just throwing that out there. So be realistic here. Think about what it is that you're really dealing with. But I really feel like this is intricately related into a worth thing. I think it's really about focusing on yourself. And that's what I feel like this relationship came into your life for. Is for you to see your worth and value. 
and that you don't have to settle for this. And now it's about you going in the direction of what it is that you want. And it may be you just figuring out what that is, what's important to you, what are you desiring, you know, and it's leaving this situation in the past and you figuring out what you want and making a plan or, you know, going to see a therapist, you know, I always say that or, you know, whatever, whatever it is that you're desiring, even if it's things kind of like how it is with this cancer up here of the fact of, you know, being hurt in the past and cancer very well could have been dealing with a person like this too, you know? But it's now making the decision to make yourself a priority and to manifest the life that you want, because it's almost like spirit is giving you a do over. You know, you don't have to relive these things that you encountered in the past. So cancer, if you truly desire a, like a partner or a counterpart to experience real love, don't allow your fear from the past to hold you back. You know, surrender to love, Dagnabbit, son of a gun, you know. Because I feel like cancers have gone through a little rebirth here. So it, it's a do-over. But the only thing that would prevent you from creating what you want is your fear from the past. And with the cross watcher, I see the same thing. You have an opportunity to completely start over and to manifest the life that you want and start making decisions in the direction of what's in your highest good or making decisions that um, are in alignment with the truth of your love for self and it's no longer settling for anything less than this you know what I mean but you know it's up to you but I feel like you guys are going to make the right choice you know and maybe if these are two people who don't know each other maybe you guys making this decision will lead both of you to each other you know, be two people who understand what it's like to be hurt and want to love and physically touch each other and things, you know. Express their self-love with each other. But I'm going to throw the dice of resonance. This is dice that have 12 zodiac signs, two clarifying die with sun, moon, and rising, and the roles that a person can play in your life. You also have the opportunity to ask a yes or no question. Yes. Yes, you can. So if you want to ask a yes or no question, go ahead and pause me. Not while I'm making a creepy face. And you're going to unpause me and I'm going to toss them out. The answers you can get are yeses, nos, and time sensitive answers. In the event that a time sensitive answer comes out, you will take that as a yes in the time frame in which that will happen. But I do not interpret them, you know. They're just thrown out and however they resonate, they resonate. So let's see what's going on. Mm, mm, mm. So we have Libra, we have Virgo, we have rising. So they could be a Libra or a Virgo rising. The answer to your question is yes in a few weeks. And the role the person plays is bay, lover, or partner. Mm. Bay, lover, or partner. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know why I'm doing that. But yeah, that's what the Dice of Resonance say. So anyway, Cancer. That has been your February 1st through 15th reading. I love your freaking face. And I will see you guys sooner than later. Deuces.